The three laws of storyboarding are make it read, make it work, make it engage. I'm Doug Leffler, and this is storyboarding as I know I'm practicing. My three laws of storyboarding, make it read, make it work, make it engage, correlate with the three disciplines of the profession, which are drawing, filmmaking, and storytelling. If you're considering storyboarding as a profession and you're starting from scratch, it's important to know that these are the three areas of knowledge you'll need to acquire. The job isn't for everybody. To create effective sequences, you need to be able to think linearly and spatially at the same time. Also, if you're somebody that likes creating pretty images, you should understand that each drawing is merely a brushstroke in a larger composition. If you are transitioning or considering transitioning to storyboarding from another profession, say comics, you're probably bringing with you drawing and storytelling skills. I know many excellent live action and animation storyboard artists that came from comics. However, it is important to know that both drawing and storytelling are different for cinema. If you are transitioning, say, from animation storyboards to live action, you need to know more about live action filmmaking. Uh, you will need to probably draw fewer poses and more environments and indicate more camera moves. Uh, Interestingly, if you're going the other way, if you're going from live action storyboarding to animation, you're probably going to have to get used to drawing but many more poses and expressions and, and working out the acting. Generally in live action storyboards, we leave the acting to the actors. If you are already a working storyboard artist, you can up your game by concentrating on whichever of these three disciplines you're weakest. Most of us who work in the profession can draw with some degree of proficiency because nobody would hire us if we couldn't. In truth, a lot of what we do can be done with stick figures and arrows, but if all we had in our portfolio was stick figures and arrows, we, we would never get hired. Most working storyboard artists I know have, have an adequate knowledge of filmmaking, but you can always learn more. And the best way to learn filmmaking is spend as much time as you can on sets. If that is not an option for you, you know, probably watch a lot of documentaries. There's other ways of acquiring knowledge, but understanding the mechanics of filmmaking is important. And the third one, storytelling. Well, storytelling is something we can all improve on. A lot of times as, as storyboard artists, we're designing sequences, but it is very valuable to know how the overall structure uh, of a story works so that we know how our sequences are going to fit within that structure. So again, Make it read, make it work, make it engage. Drawing, filmmaking, and storytelling are all vast subjects for discussion. I'm only going to give the briefest of overviews here. So drawing, the essential things to know about drawing is you need to boil everything down to its minimum. You only want as much detail as necessary. Speed is important, so you need to be able to draw fast. The workload requires it, and you might have to vary your working method depending on the schedule and how, how quickly you need to get through a sequence. You also need to be able to draw from your imagination. Now, all of us use reference material, but if, for instance, if you had reference for a galleon or a sky crane helicopter, you need to be able to draw those from different positions, just move them around in your head. Otherwise, your reference material will pollute your choice of shots. And your choice of shots should always be made based solely on what is the best way to tell the story. You're going to need to be able to draw environments as well as characters. It's something else if you come from animation, you may be used to mostly just drawing the characters. I, I don't consider myself a designer, but oftentimes the storyboard artist is the first person that begins to visualize a scene. And images are powerful things. So if you're the first person to put down what something's going to look like, often that influences the, uh, what comes later. My storyboards have affected the final production design in ways that sometimes alarmed me. Projections. Okay, so <laughs> this is a very specific uh, skill for storyboarding. The ability to project from a floor plan uh, is something that I taught myself to do early in my career. 
mostly because I just wanted to be as knowledgeable a storyboard artist as possible, and I thought it would be a skill that would come in handy. In my long career, I think I have done it maybe two or three times. However, knowing how to do it has enabled me to fake it. With filmmaking, it's important to understand the cinematic language. Um, screen direction is the first thing that you need to learn. Uh, also, the difference between a wide shot, a medium, and a close-up. Uh, it's useful also to know what a cowboy is, two T's, and a joker. You need to understand the difference between story order and shooting order. We draw the sequence in story order or in editing order. That's not the way films are made, though. On a set, time is very precious. And the choices of what is shot in what order is usually dictated by camera and lighting. Uh, it's also important to understand why directors avoid working on water, working with animals, or working with children, all of which I've done. Uh, you should also know that if you're directing a movie or a TV show that has a lot of attractive people in it, that's going to be extra time in hair and makeup, but not as much extra time as if you're working with prosthetics. Storytelling. So storytelling is easily my favorite subject of all of these subjects, all of which I love. And this is a very, very deep, uh, extensive uh, area of study. The three elements of drama are objective, obstacle, and ticking clock. It's important to understand the basics of three-act structure, giving a story a beginning, middle, and end, and um, organizing an effective crisis point. The same structure that you would apply to the overall story, you can use to construct a action sequence or a climax of a film. It's also important to understand how to uh, stage gags and how to create uh, effective reversals. But the single most important concept of storytelling is understanding the idea of participation. You want to make the viewer a participant in the storytelling and not a victim of the storytelling. One of the reasons that I call this law of make it engage as opposed to make it entertaining is we may not always be called upon to entertain people, but we we always want to engage them to put across the ideas in the most effective way possible. And participation means that you give the viewer enough information that they can anticipate what's coming, that they can uh, have hopes and expectations, and then you can also surprise them if they, if they have a preconceived notion of what might come. So storytelling is really a matter of posing compelling questions and providing unexpected but satisfying answers. So, at the risk of being redundant, make it read, make it work, make it engage. Drawing, filmmaking, storytelling. These are the three laws that govern the way I do the job. But other professionals may view it differently, and I'd be curious to hear their opinion. If you have any opinions, questions, or inspirations, please leave them in the comment section below.